Welcome again. Right now in our readings, we're reading Luke chapter 14, and we're, we're at the very end of the chapter, verses 34 and 35. Let's read it. These are the words of the Lord, the words in red, the words of Jesus himself. He said, Salt is good, but if the salt becomes flat and tasteless, with what do you season it? It is fit neither for the soil nor for the manure pile. It is thrown out. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. Now, let me help you with this one. Back in those days, they weren't so much focused on the sensual as, as most people today are. They're not focused so much on using things to improve your, you know, your, your, your taste, your senses, and this kind of thing. But salt in those days was used primarily for preservation. Pre- preservation. Even today, now I've worked, uh, uh, actually I've worked a couple decades in the food industry, and I will tell you, even today, I mean, in the 21st century, um, we still, the world still uses a lot of salt for preservation because they just cannot afford, you know, to ship huge shipments across the ocean, you know, that that's refrigerated for, you know, weeks or months on end to refrigerate a whole huge shipment. No, they just salt everything to no end. And then once they get to the other side of the world, they desalt it. And, uh, you know, the place where I was working in uh, spent a lot of time and a lot of money on desalting things. Okay, so salt is used even today uh, for preservation. You see now, even more so in the days of Jesus because they didn't have refrigerators and, and freezers as we do now. So they had to use salt to preserve things. Um, so salt was the primary preservative. And so if the salt somehow lost, as Jesus would say, its saltiness, uh, then what good is it? If the salt be- somehow changed its chemical properties, what good is the salt? If, it, if, it, if it's not really salt anymore, if it, if it lost its chemical properties of being salt, um, how would it preserve anything? You know, Jesus said in another part, por- uh, excuse me, Jesus said in another portion of scripture that you are the salt of the earth. Okay, he said that to his disciples, to his church. You are the salt of the earth. Okay. We are the salt of the earth means that we have the job of preserving the ancient morals, the ancient standards. Okay. And I've said this many, many times, but the church in the 21st century, actually beginning long before the 21st century, has begun, has begun to slide away from God, has begun to fall away from God. And that's what the scriptures talk about is in the last days, there will be a great falling away of the church. And that is what we are seeing. Instead of the church preaching salty messages... They're preaching sweet messages. A lot of churches, for the most part, the majority of mainstream Christianity has traded their salt for sugar. And we need to get back to the salt. We need to get back to the salt. We need to make sure that we are preaching a salty message, a message that is against sin. First of all, that identify sin. People don't know what sin is. They don't. They think that sin just means any anything or any action that is wrong. But what is wrong? What's wrong in your eyes might not be wrong in my eyes. What's wrong in Johnny's eyes might, might be right in Tommy's eyes. What's wrong in Tommy's eyes might be right in, in Johnny's eyes. So where is the authority? Where do we draw our moral authority from? It's got to be from the scriptures, from the ancient scriptures. 1 John chapter 3, verse 4 says that sin is transgression of God's law. Sin is when you break the law of God. The laws that are drawn out, 
you know, for us in the ancient scriptures. Okay. From the days of old. Okay. So anything that the ancient scripture says is wrong is sin according to God. If the ancient scripture, if the ancient, if the scriptures says that you're supposed to do something and you don't do it, that's sin. That's transgression of the law. So our preaching should be that of uh, defining sin. What is sin? It's anything that breaks any of the commands. You know, I know the Jewish people said they counted 613 commands. I think there probably could be more. Now, we need to keep this in, in, in context as well, that a lot of those commands do not apply to the, the common man. You know, a lot of them apply to just the priest alone. Some of them apply to women alone. Some of them applies to men alone. Some of them applies to children. Some of them applies to the strangers uh, in the land, to the visitor. I mean, it's all different kinds, so not all of 613 apply to everybody. You know, some of them apply to the judges of Israel. But... Um, we need to go back to those commandments and say, what does God really say? We know that God does not change. We know that God does not lie. We know that God does not make a mistake. We know that God wants us to know what sin is and that the definition of sin is always the same, be it you know, from the days of Adam and Eve to now. It's, it's always been and always will be the same because this is the transgression of the word of God, which is uh, eternal, eternal. Why is the word of God eternal? Because God is eternal and God never makes mistakes. He never changes his mind. He never says, oh, well, you know what? I made a total mistake in making the law. God forbid. I mean, but that's what some people think, you know, more or less. But that's the most ridiculous and that's that's pretty much blasphemous to, to even in, you know imply that so we need to define sin we need to identify sin and we need to expel sin from our lives we need to we need to repent from sin turn away from sin we need to condemn sin we'll be called haters maybe uh, we hate sin those who are sinners hate righteousness. The sinners hate the preachers of righteousness. The preachers of righteousness hate sin. Everybody hates something. So this whole hate and nonsense is just totally 100% hypocritical. But Jesus said, if you've lost your saltiness, which much of the church has, you are not good for the dirt and you're not even good for the manure pile. I mean, that is utter condemnation. That is utter worthlessness. Jesus wants us to be salt, just as he wants us to be light. And to never trade our salt in for sugar. So, um, you know, Jesus never said, you're the honey of the earth. You're the, you're the, you're the sugar of the earth. No, you are the salt of earth. The earth and you need to live your life as you know that reflects that and preach messages that reflect that salty messages of repentance against sin and re messages of vic victory over darkness and over the bondages of sin that can come in people's lives so easily be it uh, people who are addicted to substances you know, tobacco, people who are alcoholics, people who are addicted to other, all kinds of other stuff, be it that or addicted to certain lusts or uh, gluttony or, um, you know, all kinds of different things, materialism, um, uh, covetousness. These are all just things that need to be preached against, which most people are not. They just go to the church and they hear just an ear-tickling message, which really doesn't do them any good whatsoever. It actually does them evil because uh, they go away thinking they're, everything's okay with God when, they, when it's not. You know, so you don't want to be salt that has lost its, its uh, ability to preserve. You want to be salt that has maintained its saltiness and that's good to preserve uh, the ancient morals as we have uh, laid out before us in Scripture. As you go, I always think, Jesus said, you're the salt of the earth, so be the salt. 
Jesus said, you're the light of the world, so be the light. If there's darkness anywhere, what's wrong? What's wrong with the picture? There's got to be something wrong with the light. Something's wrong somewhere. So you got to expel darkness and sin at every turn. You got to preserve the ancient morals. Because, you know, honestly, we don't know better. We are getting worse. As you go, may God enlighten the eyes of your understanding, show you great and mighty things, and always lead you from glory to glory, from you know, from precept to precept, line upon line, up, line upon line, precept upon precept, as it says, and teach you great and mighty things, and give you a wonderful, wonderful life with the Lord God Almighty. In the name of Jesus, thank you.